Hello everyone and welcome to another Asus Transformer Prime video. This video is another great application, so it's available for any Android device, but it is targeted towards tablet devices and you will see why right now. On the face of it, this looks like an ordinary web browser, but it does do one very special thing. So how on earth have I got two web browsers on the same screen with the home screen still behind? Well, this is the application that we are looking at today. It is called Overscreen Floating Browser, the first truly multitasking application on the Android in the sense that you can have more than one window on the same screen. And we'll find out more as we delve a little more into the program. So, as you can see, I had two windows on here a moment ago. I just swiped them to the side for one second, but I can easily bring them back by bringing up the taskbar, and you can see that they're both there. So if I press on the BBC one, that swings back in, and then I can also use the BBC Sport one, and it then swings back in. As you can see, the marketplace is still behind there. If I press the home button, that's going to go back to the home screen, and then if I press, I'll just try if I just move this uh, window a second, so as you can see, I can move a window wherever I want on the screen, overlay it behind another screen. If I just go on the book reader, so another completely uh, random application, you will see that on screen literally stays on screen above anything else. So it is overriding uh, the visual um, view of any other program. It is essentially a window that's always on top. Now, if we just get rid of one of the windows for a second, and then if we just go back to the home screen, uh, the key thing here when you're resizing a window is there's a little icon down here which you won't be able to see. It's kind of like a, a, some dotted um, circles, and when you press there, you kind of pick up the sizing of the window, and then you can resize it the way you want. So you can make it full screen, half screen, partial screen, and so on. As you can see, as I'm resizing the window, the actual resolution is resizing as well. So it's not retaining its same resolution. The text is actually getting smaller as I make the screen smaller. So the, um, the website is fitting to the window rather than the website keeping its original um, resolution. So now, in order to read any of this text, I would have to zoom right in. And now I can read a bit of a text again. So now that the screen and the text has been resized, if I just double tip, tap, it will zoom into the page and now I can read the uh, contents here uh, relatively easy. It is still quite small. If I zoom in even further and make it very small and then double tap again, again it's resizing the text. So I could read a little article here if I wanted to. Another uh, useful thing about the program is that Although I can have an extra screen, I could also have an extra tab on here. So effectively this turns it back into a regular uh, web browser, pretty much like any other. Um, we can now, we'll test the flash on it to see how well it does cope with uh, flash videos because uh, flash video tends to be quite random on browsers. On some it works quite well, on some, as it, doesn't, on some it doesn't work at all. So let's give this one a quick try and see what happens. Pretty fast then, we'll go full screen and see if it can cope with full screen. Looks like the answer is no, unfortunately. And now I'm stuck in a browser. I'll have to do something pretty extreme here, I think. I'll just try and close that tab. So we found a bit of a bug there, in that unfortunately I've closed that tab, but the video is still playing. And I think at this point I'll have to close the application. And that's always helpful to have this little widget here, which is a task killer. So let's go back into the program now after picking up a little bit of a bug there. It does cope with flash fine as long as you don't do it on full screen. The speed of a browser is okay. I would compare it to, say, uh, the Stop Browser or ICS Plus. 
probably not as um, probably not as fast as Google Chrome, which has um, proven to be the um, fastest browser by a long distance so far. Another couple of features that we need to look at. If we double tap here, that's minimised the taskbar. So as you can see now, uh, we've still got a taskbar here, but it's minimised the actual screen. And then if I double tap again, it's going to make it bigger again. If I resize the screen, and then double tap, again it's shrunk to just the taskbar. I can move that wherever I want, and then double tap it again, and it comes down. Let's make the screen completely full size again. There's a little tab button here, which gives you options to forwards, backwards, refresh, and home screen. So a nice little uh, selection of shortcuts there. And there's also a settings button here, which I'll just zoom in on. So pardon the camera for one moment. We can put in a new window, add bookmarks, share, copy URL. There's a desktop version. Um, ticker which is there which is very useful and there's uh, also the options to create bookmarks and I believe if I do look at my bookmarks you will see that um, it's using the same format as the uh, standard stock browser so that's uh, fairly useful and all standard and very good in that sense let's see if I can get back to the uh, screen I guess I'll have to go to another website to do that if you want to quickly get rid of the uh, window off the screen but not close down a program you can simply press on this grey uh, one up here and then it swings away and as I've already shown you I can then quickly get it back there's only one uh, window so it's automatically coming back and then if I want to terminate uh, in the notifications bar if I just press here over screen tap to terminate and there we go and the uh, browser has shut down so on to the settings now you can set your home page there's uh, all the usual um, privacy and security options. The advanced options, user agent, so you could set it to desktop, which I have done. Uh, opening background. There is this auto, auto hide um, option, which is to minimize to notifications when starting an external applications. I assume that means if, if I start an application such as my book reader, it should automatically minimize the uh, screens. Well, clearly that wasn't the case, so I'm not too sure if that's a bug or whether it's just not working particularly on my um, tablet at the moment. Uh, on to bandwidth management, load images. I'm guessing that's more to do with mobile phones since uh, the tablet really should be loading all the images all the time. And then just a bit of information about, about the um, device itself. So if we go back to the um, program itself, and I have three screens running now. I have BBC website on one side, uh, Google Maps on another, and then a Hot Deals UK in another one. So all these three browsers now are overlaid at the current settings page. And if I just press the home screen, it's gone to the home screen behind everything else, but you can't see that because uh, all these windows are still here. So to summarise this application, it's a fantastic piece of software engineering. I've never seen anything like it on the Android and it really does give you the uh, ability to multitask within this application and I think that's the big problem I personally have with this application. If you think about it in a broader spectrum, I now have all these pages on the screen but my response to that is, so what? I can't really look at any of these websites easily, I have to resize there in order to read that one. Uh, this one's again very small, I'm going to have to resize, so I'm going to have to do a lot of dog, dog work in order to make it usable, whereas I could just have it on another tab, full screen. Um, another criticism I have a little bit is the way you drag the window about this here, uh, it's not much of a grabbing point and sometimes it's a bit difficult to pick it up, especially if you put it in the bottom corner, which I'll do now, sometimes it's a bit difficult to pick up because you keep picking up the noti notifications by accident and not doing it. So I'm not sure if the placement of that uh, grabbing icon is perhaps the most sensible but at the same time I'm not sure where else you would put it. I would also like a button somewhere where you could automatically make it full screen and actually kind of go into the application rather than being over screen because sometimes um, 
dragging it and making it big is a, again a bit of donkey work. Now if I just had a button where I sort of tip a simple press and it automatically made it full screen. A feature that I do think would significantly improve this uh, application is if it had the ability to snap uh, windows to certain parts of the screen. Uh, for example in Windows 7 if I pick up this tab here I c if I moved it to the uh, extreme left it would resize itself to kind of like this half of the screen. Uh, if I move this one to the top it would automatically resize itself to the whole of the screen and I think that would negate a lot of the um, unnecessary work that's required by resizing the windows manually. So, just to demonstrate, if I picked up the window here, dragged it to the side, I would want it to resize to the whole of this right half uh, part of the screen. And the other real issue is that, as I've already demonstrated, it interferes too much with other applications anyway. I can't seriously read a book and have a website here at the same time. What this uh, really needs to lead to for the developers over the screen is kind of make an over application where we can put any of these applications in Windows and then you have uh, true multitasking. Um, I have tried to do some copying and pasting uh, but it hasn't worked too well trying to get the information off the uh, web browser and onto another application but that's a, a big criticism I have with the, with the tablet. Anyway, so I'm kind of left feeling that this is a, a wonderful starting point for multitasking applications, but by itself, it can't really, it doesn't homogenize the entire thing. I can't bring up um, a video player up here, although there is another independent uh, application from the same developers here. Uh, I think the um, application is called Stick It, where you could actually put a movie in another place on a window. But then I would also want to put, um, for example, a BBC News application in another window and uh, a game, particularly a game in another window. Uh, often you can use games which are on the phone. Um, if you could resize a game to the phone size maybe here and have a website here running then that would be perfect. But I must admit I am nitpicking. This is a, a brilliant a demonstration of uh, software technology and um, if you want to get it by all means uh, I can't not recommend it. I'm just trying to justify how you would be able to use it when you have so little sort of screen space anyway uh, to use uh, on a tablet. I, I've found that really when you're using a tablet you're using mostly one um, uh, application and when you want to switch to another you can simply use something like swipe pad to then quickly jump to another application. There's my review of Overscreen. Uh, if you do have any questions and if you do want to sort of respond to my criticisms of it then please do so because I think um, it's a wonderful piece of software as I've said uh, numerous times now but I just can't find a place for it in my day-to-day -day use. I still find that after I bought Overscreen I'm happy to use the Google Chrome browser because it's so fast and I have my tabs here where I can s s quickly switch from one um, window to the other. I can actually read it without having to struggle with the resizing. Thanks for watching everyone. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you again soon.